going on guys sam Prentice back once again with the creality k1 or creality k1 times two for example it's been a roller coaster of four weeks with a broken hot end various software issues but i'm pleased to report as of right now creality have righted the wrongs and we've got two working creality k1s now of course it goes without saying that many manufacturers on their first batches do sometimes have some fails and it's just been one of those unfortunate things but as i say Creality have certainly righted their wrongs and I'm very, very happy with the results so far. So I'm super keen to show you after this temperamental four weeks exactly what these machines can do. I'd like to thank this video sponsors PCBWay.com, your one-stop solution for PCB fabrication and assembly needs. But that's not all they offer. PCBWay.com goes beyond PCB manufacturing and also provides a range of additional services, including 3D printing and CNC machining. With their comprehensive capabilities, you can bring your ideas to reality with ease. Visit their website now to explore the full spectrum of services offered by PCBWay.com your trusted partner in electronic manufacturing. So the speed race from Creality is really nothing new. We saw that at the dawn of time when they brought out this Sonic Pad, which basically clipperizes all of your old Creality printers. And needless to say, clipper is very apparent inside of the K1. So let's take a deep dive into the specifications of the Creality K1. Now with a build volume of 220 by 220 by 250, it offers a common yet practical size. However, where it really truly stands out is on its printing speed. With an astonishing printing speed of up to 600 millimeters per second and travel speed of up to 800 millimeters per second. And of course, coupled with acceleration of again, up to 20,000 millimeters squared, the K1 is a sight to behold in action. It delivers versatility in material options. With a max flow of 32mm squared, it handles demanding prints with ease. While its impressive specs may not be unusual when compared to Ratrig and Voron printers, the real game changer here is the convenience of a pre-built Core XY fast printer. With the K1, you can be up and printing within about 15 minutes, eliminating the hassle of assembling everything yourself. So get ready to experience the rapid heating and outstanding performance of the K1. So what exactly is Clipper and what is the fuss really all about? So Clipper firmware is an open source 3D printing firmware that offers advanced features and performance enhancements. Unlike traditional firmware that runs directly on the printer's microcontroller, Clipper offloads most of its processing to a more powerful computer like a Raspberry Pi. This approach allows for faster and more precise printing, as well as the ability to utilize additional sensors and features. Clipper supports a wide range of 3D printer models and provides extensive customization options throughout its configuration files. It enables the end users to fine tune their printer settings, implement advanced algorithms, and even run multiple printers simultaneously. Clipper has gained popularity amongst the 3D printing community for its versatility, speed, and the ability to push the boundaries of printer performance. So when does 3D printing really feel like a compromise? Sorry, what? Well, you know that bit that I just said, remember? So Clipper firmware is an open source 3D printing. Ah, yes, the uh, the open source bit. Hmm. As you may know, Creality has incorporated elements of Marlin firmware into many of their models over the years. However, the current trend seems to be the flavor of Clipper firmware, not only for Creality, but for numerous companies seeking leverage in its feature rich offering. It is, of course, evident that Creality has implemented Clipper on the K1 but for the most part, it restricts the end user from making modifications. This is very much reminiscent of the situation when Creality introduced the Sonic Pad. The reasons behind this approach may vary, but it does raise concerns regarding compliance with the terms of the GPL when utilizing or distributing Clipper firmware. That's right, Clipper, or um, as we know it, Creality OS. So I'm not going to get bogged down on this part anyway. Um, the printer is still working incredibly well, and I'm very, very happy with it. So let's move on. So what about the price coming in at $599 or £579? Or if you go to Technology Outlet at the moment, I think it's up for £479. This is certainly a very good deal for the size of printer. So what are the quality of the prints actually like? The K1 has truly exceeded expectations in its flawless printing performance ever since the parts were changed and the firmware was upgraded. The overall quality of the prints and ease of print removal has been exactly as anticipated. The printer has proven its versatility by successfully printing various materials including PLA, PETG and ABS and showcased in the impressive Benji prints. Notably, it's even handled challenging materials such as carbon fibre infused PETG and recycled PETG without any issues. All in all, there have been no significant drawbacks or unexpected surprises encountered throughout the printing process. 
From a slicer perspective, it has become apparent that the tuning of the K1 3D printer has heavily centered around the Creality's ecosystem and the materials that it supports. While the printer performed admirably with Creality's recommended filaments, I encountered some challenges when using other types of filaments. It became evident that further adjustments were necessary to optimize the printer's performance with these non-Creality materials. Dialing in the filament settings required additional fine-tuning and experimentation in order to achieve the desired print results. So now with all things said and done, Creality have wholeheartedly delivered on a fantastic Corex Y printer, but it isn't without some compromises. Let's get into it. So one thing to consider is Creality Cloud and its premium membership. While the cloud offers other benefits, the presence of intrusive and irrelevant adverts diminishes the experience. The premium membership, of course, costs as eye-watering $79 per year or $7.99 a month, requiring users to weigh in on the value that it provides. But it also does unlock some of the important features like remote printing and remote control of your 3D printer. So remember earlier when we talked about that whole open source thing? Well, the community say if we aren't going to get what we want straight away, well, then we're going to hack it. And that's exactly what they've done. So in short, the way Creality deal with the community and how they work with the community, I think probably needs to be looked at because obviously they're not getting what they want. The return of the lemons, and although these K1s are exactly the same size, well, they're not the same kind of quality. For instance, one of the doors is a little bit iffy and there's hot glue hanging down from the light unit. On the latest unit that they sent me though, actually the quality control is very, very nice indeed. Lucky for me though, all repairs have been pretty simple ones. So from the offset, the K1 certainly delivers on all of its promises, but I do feel that the K1 Max is certainly going to be better. So let's talk a little bit about the K1 Max. The build volume on that is going to be 300, 300, 300. It is going to also feature LiDAR and also an AI camera. Speeds, of course, are exactly the same as the K1, up to 600 millimeters per second. So limiting that success from Creality, I do hope very much that the Max is a glorious success and they get it right first time. So what about acknowledging the elephant in the room? Geez, that's a real big one. Well, just before the unfortunate hot end incident on the Creality K1, I was just about on the verge of conducting a thorough test and filming comparison with the Bamboo Lab printers. It's important to note though that the Bamboo Lab exhibits a significant edge in understanding the user experience. Their standout feature, which is allowing you to print remotely, has very much revolutionized my time management. This premium cloud service that Creality has addresses really a personal pain point of mine. And when a company offers such a great feature, I greatly appreciate the potential for universal applications. That of course, all being said, there will be more content, so make sure you guys like and subscribe. So how do we sum up the Creality K1? Well, actually it's weird because it's a sort of like a paradox for me. We had the initial issues, then we moved on from those. And right now I actually, I'm having a really good experience with the Creality K1 printers and working with them, tuning them, working out what works and what doesn't work has actually been a pretty interesting job for me. Um, if you don't want to print in 16 colors and you don't want to go down the Bamboo Lab route, and there will be other routes that come across, if you're looking for a bigger printer than a Bamboo and you're looking at the 300 with the K1 Max, again, I think Creality is still a very, very good option. Now, you're going to read a lot online where people are going to have various experiences. But overall, and once Creality, again, fix those issues, um, I think we're in for a really good time. Now, the other thing with this, of course, like most things, you're not really going to know how things work out. So this is a printer that I think for the first time in quite a long time, I'm going to probably keep working with keep updating short videos, keep updating maintenance videos as well, because as we get into this, and of course, other printers have got well over a year now into their maintenance schedule, we're going to see how this thing, you know, basically copes under pressure. So I'm going to continue to keep using them. Thank you again to Free Creality for putting uh, this machine into my hands and dealing with all the issues that have come about. Um, thank you guys as well for tuning in and watching the videos. Um, I know I got a bit of uh, flack online on various Facebook groups and stuff over some of the initial tests and stuff. It is what it is. Um, I'm a maker just like you. So it just happens that what I do is a byproduct on YouTube. So getting these printers in is absolutely awesome. And hopefully educating you and showing you what these things are all about is, I guess, kind of part and parcel to that as well. So should you buy one? Yeah, if you've got the money to do it. And certainly if you're going through Technology Outlet for $479, that is an 
absolutely brilliant price printer. So let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you want to see something specifically, I'm out to the stage uh, actually next week for Murph, but if you want to see something when I get back, I'm very, very happy to make content on behalf of you guys as well. So any questions, comments, leave them below. We'll catch you next time. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon. You are watching a master at work.